This is problem 15.135 on page 1053. Roberts linkage is named after Richard Roberts and can be used to draw a closed approximation to a straight line by locating the pin at point up. The distance AB is the same as BF, DF, and DE, noted, knowing that at the instant shown bar AB has a constant angular velocity for radius per second clockwise. Determine A, the angular acceleration of bar DE and the acceleration point F. I actually selected this problem because we had worked on like it earlier, but dealing with velocity. And I was thinking it would be the same configuration. It's not. It's not the same position. So the solution is different than it was before. But this will be a good chance for us to look at the velocity solution as well as the acceleration solution. Because now we're dealing with acceleration, not just velocity. So let me sketch the mechanism. Something like this. I really enjoy the mechanism analysis. It's one of the things that I studied quite a bit in college. So I'm sort of partial to these. So here's point F down here. All this angle theta. And there's point E. We were told that the angular speed of body AB is 4 radians per second clockwise. Now we could write this a different way, which may be a good idea. Let's see, if we have a regular coordinate system like this, x into y is z out, and if this is a clockwise rotation, that means it's in the board. So we could actually write this a different way. We could write this as a vector, negative 4 k, <coughs> excuse me, radians per second. <coughs> However, it's a constant angular speed, and so the angular acceleration of body AB is zero. We'd like to know the angular acceleration of DE, and we'd like to know the acceleration of point F. Those are the things that are requested. <coughs> the position analysis is really pretty trivial. Um, of course, this side is 12 inches, as well as this side is 12 inches. So there's not a lot to say about position. When we need position information, we'll just use geometry to find it. But the first thing to do is to use velocity analysis. <clears throat> so what do I mean? Well, we know the speed of AB, but how fast is the whole body BDF, or body DE? How quickly are those rotating? Or what's the velocity of the point F? These things are things we may want to know. Now, a lot of times you don't have to get linear velocities. A lot of times you can just get angular velocities, and that's adequate for the angular analysis, or I'm sorry, for the velocity analysis. Well, let's start off with velocity analysis and write that the velocity of point B, well, how can we write it? Well, we can write it in terms of what's going on with AB, because we know what's going on with AB, right? Basically, this point is moving on a circle, and so calculating the velocity is easy. In fact, you could intuitively understand what's going on because you know that AB is rotating this way, so the velocity of point B has to be perpendicular to arm AB down to the right. So that's actually pretty simple. Another way to write that is that it's just the angular velocity of AB crossed with the vector from A to B. A vector that goes from here to here. Let's draw that vector already. Why not? So there's the vector R from A to B. Of course, I didn't quite draw it to do, but I meant to I'm illustrate what we're talking about here. So, if I were to expand these terms, the angular velocity as a vector is negative 4k radians per second crossed with r from a to b. Well, r from a to b, we could figure out fairly easily. If we look at the geometry, you'll realize that we got 6 inches from here to here. Now, I don't remember if they told us that directly. Uh, they told us that there are three inches. That's something I didn't write down. There are three inches horizontally this way, and three more inches this way. So the vector from A to B is pretty simple. It's 3i, go over three, go up, by how much? Well, this part's a little more complicated. We'd have to take 12 squared minus 3 squared square root, right? So 12 squared is 144, 3 squared is 9, 9 from 144 is 135, so uh, plus root 135 in the j direction. Of course, these are inches. Okay. So now we need to take the cross product of k 
k with i and k with j. Other than that, we just multiply things through. So, for example, we've got negative 12, taking these two terms together. k into i is j. And the units will be inches per second for that term. It'll be inches per second for the next term. So let's just continue. Um, so then we'll have minus 4 root 135, just multiplying it out. K cross J, well K cross J, that would be minus I. Okay. <clears throat> and of course, as I said, the units are inches per second. Okay. Simplifying things down just a little bit, this would be 4 root 135I minus 12J as a vector, inches per second. So there's the velocity of point B. Not really all that exciting that there's a large horizontal component, a fairly small but significant vertical component. Makes sense in the directions that they're, they're pointing because we expect that velocity to be down to the right. Okay, fine. What about the velocity of point D? That works as well for B. Let's, let's take the velocity of point D, but in terms of what? Because we have options. We can write the velocity of point D in terms of rotation about E, just like we did here. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. It would be omega D E crossed with R from E to D. Looks a lot like what we just did. Okay? However, notice we don't know the angular speed of D E. All I'm doing right now is setting up an equation that will involve this. And then I'll be able to write the velocity of point D in terms of the velocity of point B. Why? Because B and D are on the same body. Okay. So let's see what happens. All right, same game we played before. Omega DE, since I don't know its magnitude, I'll simply write that in the k direction. Assuming it's positive, if I get omega DE as negative, well, then I don't know, I chose the wrong direction. Okay, but it needs to be crossed with a vector from E to D. But that's a pretty simple vector as well. It would just be negative 3i plus root 135j. And so, uh, if we take the cross products, we'll have negative 3 omega d e, this k cross i is just j, and then we'll have uh, plus omega d e root 135, k cross j minus i. Of course, the units are as they were before, but I'm getting tired of writing units. Simplifying this just a little bit, we'll have negative omega d E root 135, I always like to write these in, in proper order. So there's the I component, minus 3 omega D E J. Okay. Like I said, we don't have to write the velocity point D as it is, or the velocity point B. We can simply write one in terms of the other. For example, velocity point B equals the velocity of D plus the relative velocity of B with respect to D. Now, in velocity analysis, this relative term is always an omega cross r type of term. So we'll have velocity of point D plus, a, now when I say an omega cross r, what do I mean? Well, look at the two points, B and D. Well, that's on this body, right? So the angular velocity I'm talking about is the angular velocity of this body. So omega, let's call it B, D, F, to be very clear what we're talking about. Crossed with what? All you got to do is look at the order. This goes from D to B. So that is R. You can write it this way, B with respect to D. Or you could simply write it as R from uh, D to B. Either way is okay. It means the same thing. So in other words, that vector is a vector that points from D back to B. Well, I guess it's clear it goes all the way. <clears throat> okay, so let's uh, continue with this. So if we expand this just a bit, we'll have the velocity of point D plus omega B D F, which I'm going to assume is in the K direction, crossed with R from D to B. Well, that's just a vector that points in the negative I direction six inches. That's it. So let's just write it this way. Uh, six inches in the negative i direction. Okay? I think I'm going off the camera here a bit. I apologize if that's the case. So, 
Simplify that down just a little bit. Or better yet, why don't we go ahead because I guess we could take, uh, uh, let's see. Well, I'll simplify that in a minute. Um, this velocity point B also has to be this vector, doesn't it? So isn't that just 4 root 135i minus 12j? I'm going to drop the units because the units are all consistent. I'm being careful to use inches and seconds. So that's just the velocity point B. On the right hand side, I'll have the velocity uh, of point D. And for that, I'll just plug in, uh, let's see, no, I'll plug this in, it'll be easier. So minus omega d e root 135 in the i direction, minus 3 omega d e in the j direction. Notice all I've done is plugged in the velocity point d. Lastly, I have this term. Let's simplify that term uh, just a little bit. How would it come out? Well, let's see. Negative 6 omega, so minus 6 omega b d f, just pulling out all the, the numbers, if you will, the scalars. And I've already pulled out the negative sign, and I need k cross j. Well, k cross j is negative i. I'd have been better off to leave that negative j by itself, but oh well. Okay. So I pulled that negative sign out here, and then when you take the cross product of k cross uh, i, because that negative sign is gone, now what is it? That's k cross i, so that would just be j. Never mind. There we go. So now what? Well, let's look at the i components. What do we have? We have 4 root 135, not the j component, equals negative omega d e root 135. Uh, any other i's? Yep. Uh, no, that's it. That's all the i's. So this would allow us to calculate omega d e. Just divide it through by negative root 135. This should be a 5 here too, I'm sorry. Okay, what do we get? Well, negative 4 radius per second. So now we know the angular speed of DE. Which way is it going? Clockwise. So we could write that, move E over here just a bit, <coughs> omega DE equals negative 4 K radius per second. Why did I write it? Well, I've already drawn it in the negative direction, but I'm just <coughs> writing it as a vector right now. That's what that thing is. You see? What else? Well, we can also look at the J component. If we look at the J component, what does that look like? Well, we've got negative 12 equals, on the right hand side, negative 3 omega DE. Notice omega DE is a negative thing, so I'm going to plug in negative 4 for that. Minus 6 omega BDF. What will this do for me? It will allow me to calculate the angular speed of this intermediate body. Okay. So let's see, if this is negative 4, what do we have? We've got positive 12, right? So that would be negative 24, move it to the other side, equals negative 6 omega BDF. All we've got to do is take 24 divided by 6, which is what 6 and 6 12, so 4. So omega BDF is a positive 4 radians per second. So that means this body is rotating counterclockwise. Stick with that coordinate system. 4k radius per second. Does that make sense? Well, let's see. If AB rotates this way, it makes sense that DE also has to rotate that way. And it also makes sense that BDF would rotate counterclockwise. And because it's all symmetrical, they all have the same speed. Okay. So that's the Excel or that's the velocity analysis. Okay. I'm not really interested in the velocity of point L, because I wasn't asked for it. But all the angular velocity speeds are really important. We've got all of those. Now let's continue with the acceleration analysis. The fun begins. If you thought that was fun, just wait till you see the next part. All right. <clears throat> the acceleration of point A and point E is zero. You can see that. Those are points that are fixed, right? So those are reference points. So if we were to write the acceleration point B in terms of 
the acceleration of point A plus the relative acceleration of B with respect to A, that piece would go away. So basically B just accelerates with respect to A. Not really a surprise. Now how does that acceleration break out? Some of you haven't been here for a little while, and the rest of you could use the refresher. How does relative acceleration, remember relative velocity is always an omega cross r type term. So what two pieces are there always for a relative acceleration? Normal and tangential, right? So the tangential piece we always write as alpha cross r. Alpha of what? In other words, angular acceleration of what body? Well, look at the two points. Angular acceleration of body AB. You see? So angular acceleration of AB crossed with a vector from A to B plus what? So that's the tangential piece. How does the normal piece go? It's always what? It's omega cross omega cross R. Right? So it's going to be an omega squared type term. So let's just write it all out. Omega AB crossed with the quantity omega AB cross RAB. Here's something to note. This vector is always the same position vector okay, in both the terms. <clears throat> now, we know something about the rotation of AB. It's a constant rate. So how much is the acceleration of body AB? If you're driving down the highway at 50 miles an hour, you don't speed up or slow down. How much is your acceleration? Zero. Okay. So if the angular speed is constant, then the angular acceleration is zero. Okay. In other words, it's rotating at some constant rate. Of, I know it's not RPM, but you could think of it as RPM. Okay. It's just an angular velocity, that's all it is. So this first term, there's not going to be any tangential acceleration of point B. That makes sense. The, the body's not speeding up or slowing down. But there will be normal acceleration. Which way will the normal acceleration point? Always from B to A. In fact, notice something about this cross product term. When we take all of these cross products, which look like quite a bear, all that ever happens is this direction ends up being the opposite of that direction. That's all that happens. So all these cross products, you don't really have to worry about them. The acceleration of point B will end up being omega AB squared times the distance RAB, and we just need a vector that points in the opposite direction of RAB. Maybe something like this, negative RAB over the magnitude of RAB. See? We just need a unit vector that points against RAB. So you can write it this way, you can write it many ways. We have geometry here, so it's easy enough to write it out. Uh, let's see, I don't want to get ahead of myself in my solution. Let me uh, figure out where I'm at. Yeah, there we go. So, what would that look like? Well, the vector uh, from B to A, the unit vector, let's see, I'm doing it differently than my solution, but that's okay, we'll, we'll continue and we'll meet back up with it in a moment. Uh, we know that it has a negative 3 I component, don't worry, I'll take the magnitude here in just a second negative 3 i component, and because it has to point from b to a, so that's going to be in both the negative x and negative y direction, minus, what was this side? It was root 135, remember that? So minus root 135 in the j direction, and what would the magnitude of this vector be that goes from b to a? Well, it's simply root 144, isn't it? Because the hypotenuse side is 12 inches. So well, that's the length of that side. Okay. All right. So let's see. What do we know? Well, we know the length of AB. That's just 12 inches. And so if we expand this a bit, what would we end up with? Well, we should end up with this. Uh, let's see. Oh, we know what omega AB, don't we? It's uh, 4 radians per second. So if we square that, we'd have uh, 16 times 12 times negative 3. Ah, let's put the root 144 over here. In fact, root 144 is the same thing as 12, so let's just do that. Minus root 135, the J. And what I got when I multiplied all this out was negative 48I, so 3 times 16 is 48. And uh, negative, I left it this way, 16 root 135. J. Of course, the units are what? 
acceleration in English units per second. inches per second squared. Right. Inches per second per second. So there's the acceleration of point B. Okay. Notice I'm going down a similar path to what I did when I've dealt with velocity. What about the acceleration point D? Now that you've seen how I've written the acceleration point B, how shall I write the acceleration point D? Well, we could write it in terms of the acceleration point E as well, couldn't we? It would be a similar thing, just like we did with velocity. So the acceleration of point D equals the acceleration of point E plus the relative acceleration of D with respect to E. Okay? Again, same thing, the acceleration of point E is zero, and so the acceleration of body DE is going to be in the k direction, I'm assuming a positive, crossed with R from E to D, plus omega DE, let's put the vector over here, DE in the k direction, crossed with omega DE in the k direction, cross R from E to D. Okay, I'm just writing things in various different ways, but I mean the same thing. It's just the angular velocity vector for DE. We already know the angular velocity of DE. We found that early on. It's a negative 4k bar, right? So I just put a negative 4 here, and that would be done. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> So let's continue. Now the length from, let's see, where are we? I don't want to lose my place. Yeah, I jumped ahead. Okay, so, why did I write that? I think I've lost my place. Hang on a second, guys, bear with me. Oh, yes, okay. Yeah, I'm skipping the line again. Okay, so let's write this again, alpha, D, E, K, cross, but now let's actually write out the vector R from E to D. We had it before, right? It was negative 3 I plus root 135 J. That was the vector from E to D plus, copying this, omega D, E in the K direction crossed with omega D, E in the K direction crossed with R from E to D. Well, R from E to D is still the same vector. It's negative 3i plus root 135j. And that will finish off the expression. Alright, so let's continue. So if we take k cross i, k cross i is j, so that'd be negative 3 alpha d e in the j direction. That's this cross product. The next cross product, k cross j, is minus i, so we'll just write minus alpha d e, pulling this out, root 135, pulling that out, in the i direction, because again it's k cross j, which is minus i. Moving on to the next term, we'll have to keep omega d e by itself because we have to compute the inner cross product first. Now instead of just saying, look, I know the acceleration is going to be this way and writing it down, I'm proving to you that that's what will happen. So let's see, where were we? Uh, right here. So this cross product, what would we have? Well, let's see, k cross i is j, so minus 3 omega d e j. That's this first cross product. I finished the second cross product originally there. And I need k cross j. Well, k cross j is minus i, so minus omega d e root 135 in the i direction. Okay. All right. Let's see. All of this will be the same to there. So let's just continue from there. So now we need to take the cross product, k cross j, for example, which is minus i. Minus times minus is plus. So let me just write plus 3 omega d e, just picking off the multipliers, in the i direction. That's k cross j. k cross i is j. We've got a minus sign. So minus omega 
Oh, sorry, I forgot. We got two omegas, so that was squared. Uh, did I write it squared? Yes, okay. So omega DE squared again, because now we've got omega DE, omega DE root 135. As I said, K cross I is J, so there we go. And notice that as I said, this term came out with a positive I component and a very large negative J component. Sure enough, it points that way, which is exactly what we expected. We expected the normal acceleration about this point to point from D to E. Okay. You don't have to compute the cross product. You could have just uh, multiplied it out and been okay, but there it is. Of course, then you'd have to break up the I and J components. So either way is okay. So where are we? Uh, let's see, right there. Okay, so if we simplify this a bit, because notice we know omega DE, don't we? Omega DE is 4. Uh, positive or negative? Positive or negative won't really matter because we're squaring it. So let's just simplify things a little bit. Negative 3 alpha DE in the J direction, that's the first term. Copy the second minus alpha d e root 135 in the i direction, second term. And then here we know that we have, uh, let's see, oh, I'm copying the wrong line. I want to put these in order. I thought that's something I want to do. Negative alpha d e root 135. I like my i components to come first. Here we go. So we copy that one. And then the J component. So minus 3 alpha D E and the J component. There's so many things you want on it. It helps to have some things to keep everything straight, some, some habits. So if omega D E is 4 and we square that, that'd be 16. 3 16s are 48. So 48I takes care of this term. And then here again, we'd have 16 root 135 in the J direction. Now what do you think I should do? Following the same path I did before with velocity, aren't I? Writing accelerations of points in terms of acceleration of known points. Then what did I do after I had the velocities of B and D? Or expressions for them at least. I related those two velocities together. What should I do with acceleration? It's the same thing. Why don't I relate the acceleration, say, of point D? In fact, let me, uh, let's see. Let me note that this is the acceleration of point B. That we have got all of this space to work in. Let me write that the acceleration of point D is just the acceleration of point B plus the relative acceleration of D with respect to B. Okay, same trick that we pulled with velocity. Again, the relative acceleration will be, it will consist of a uh, tangential, I used dB before I used dB again, and a radial component, or a normal, excuse me, a normal component. So I'll need the acceleration point B plus, <clears throat> start filling in some things, alpha dB, okay, how long is the distance from B to D? Notice I'm going from B to D this time, because I've written the acceleration of D in terms of, of B. I could have done it the other way. With velocity, I wrote the velocity of, how did it go? Uh, it must have been uh, velocity of B with respect to D. Now I'm writing the acceleration of D with respect to B. It doesn't matter. Take your pick. Okay. But now the vector that I'm interested in, just because I'm varying things a bit, just for fun, just so you can see it all works, is the vector from B to D. And that vector is just 6i, isn't it? 6 inches in the i direction. Of course, I'm dropping my units because they're all consistent. So that expands that just a little bit, plus 
omega db in the k direction, I'm going to leave that alone even though we know what it is. Omega db, well that's really the same thing as omega bdf, right? Because I'm just talking about this body that connects b to d, okay? So call it whatever you like, it's still the same thing. So let's continue this omega db in the k direction cross omega db in the k direction cross r from b to d. Well, that's still just 6i. Okay. Now, in what direction will this vector point? Once I take k cross i and then k cross the result, which direction will that point? B is the reference point. We're going from B to D, it'll point that way. It's always opposite the direction of this vector. It'll just be in the negative I direction. So do we need to write all of that down? Not really. So let's continue. Acceleration of B plus K cross I is J. So we'll just write 6 alpha dB in the J direction. That repeats that cross product. And like I said, we know this result is simply going to point in the negative i direction. So let's just write minus, let's pull out that 6, omega db squared in the negative i direction. Okay. Or maybe if you like, like this. Okay. You don't really have to take that k cross k cross thing. <laughs> All right, can we expand this just a bit or plug in some numbers now? Well, the acceleration of B is a known thing. It's right here. Negative 48I minus 16 root 135J. That's this piece. Plus 6 times the angular acceleration of body DB or body BDF, if you like. It's just the one in the middle in the J direction. Okay, so that's that term. And then this term, well, omega db, that's just 4. So that's going to be, what, 4 times 4 is 16? So 6 sixteens. How much are 6 sixteens? I didn't write it down. 96. 96. All right. So let's pull the minus sign out. Minus 96, that's 6 sixteens, in the i direction. Okay. So that's the acceleration of D, but wait a second. We have another expression for the acceleration of D right here. Notice what's different. We have in this one the angular acceleration of DB. Here we have the angular acceleration of DE. See the difference there? So we're relating the angular acceleration of DE and the angular acceleration of db together. Okay. Now you might look at that and say, well, we don't have enough equations. Actually, we're dealing with two equations. We've got an i component and a j component. From the two. So usually what happens is one of the components will involve one of the accelerations, probably the acceleration of de in one of the directions. We'll get that one, and then we'll plug that back in to get the other acceleration. Let me show you what I mean. So we don't need this anymore. We've incorporated it into our equation. So if this is the acceleration of point D right here, let's look at the I component. In the I component direction, we've got negative 48 from here, and we have negative 96. Right, I could have just added those two together. Probably should have, but there they are. That's in the I direction. The other two pieces are in the J direction. That's also still has, that also still has to be equal to the acceleration of D from this expression. And there we have an I component of negative alpha DE root 135 and also plus 48. Okay. So that's this I component, that I component, that one, and that one. So from this, we can solve for the angular acceleration of body DE. That's this side link over here. I've made a mistake at the board. So far, so good. Now, I'm not going to bore you with the algebra. This is pretty easy to do. 
we get an angular acceleration of about 16.525 radians per second squared. And notice it's positive, so we can write it as a vector in the k direction. Okay? So the angular acceleration of this body is this way. It might be turning this way, but it's slowing down. Okay? <clears throat> Was that one of the things they wanted? Yeah, they wanted the angular acceleration. So now we've got it. 16.525 in the k direction, radians per second squared. There's one of our answers. While we're at it, we probably ought to go ahead and get the angular acceleration of body BD. Why? Because point F is on body BD. We don't know how the body is accelerating. We probably won't be able to say anything about the linear acceleration of point F. In other words, let's consider the J direction as well. In the J direction, the acceleration of point D has a negative 16 root 135 piece and a 6 alpha db piece. That's on the left hand side. That's the expression of the acceleration of d from our from point B. The acceleration, the expression for acceleration of d in terms of point E tells us that, in other words, on the other side, we've got negative 3 alpha de here and minus 16 root 135 from here. Well, negative 16 root 135 is the same on both sides. So basically what this tells us is, look, the acceleration of body db and de are related. One's twice the other, and they're going in opposite directions. So if we rearrange this a bit, what it tells us is that the angular acceleration of db equals negative half the angular acceleration of de. So I know they didn't ask for it. But I'm going to put the result here, because if we know the angular acceleration of DE, take the opposite direction, take half, and you've got the angular acceleration of DB. I'll take that, cut it in half, attach a negative sign, that's a negative 8.2624 or so radians per second squared. I don't want to forget that, so I'm going to write that down, even though they didn't ask for it. Any questions so far? You're all right. All right. How do you think I'm going to figure out the acceleration of point F? Well, we can relate it to the acceleration of some other point. And now that we know how body BDF is moving, no problem. So another uh, uh, acceleration phase. That's why I say this thing. So the acceleration of point F, you could write in terms of the acceleration of point D. I chose to write in, in terms of the acceleration of point D. It doesn't matter. You get the same result. Okay. So I wrote the acceleration of point B plus the relative acceleration of F with respect to B. Okay, so again, this relative acceleration will have a tangential normal piece. Let's expand it. And what body are we talking about? Well, the body that contains both F and B. Well, F and B, that would be this body in the center. So we're talking about the angular acceleration of body BD. What about the vector? Where do that, I need to, I'm working on the tangential acceleration. I need an omega cross R term. That's the tangential acceleration. This R has to point from where to where? Exactly. It's got a point from B to F. So the vector we're talking about now, and you can always see by looking at the relative acceleration from B to F. There's the vector we're talking about. So there's the tangential acceleration plus omega of what? Well, body BD crossed with omega of body BD cross R BF. Okay. So we've got points B and F in this. There's got to be a best friend forever joke. Saying that this stuff is your best friend, but I don't know where it is, so we'll just keep going. So acceleration of B 
plus, well, let's see. This, since we're in 2D, is simply a vector in the k direction. Okay? Let's just write it that way. We know it's magnitude right here. I guess I should have been consistent. I'm going to write that as a vector, put a k in there. There we go. So I could just plug this in as it is. It doesn't matter. Cross with the vector from b to f. Well, that's 3i minus root 135j. In other words, if you need to get from b to f, move over 3 and down root 135, and you're there. That's what this position vector says. Now, I could go and take the cross product. In fact, that's what I did in this solution. But you tell me, this omega cross omega cross r, what direction is it going to point? In the direction of r. Or like negative direction of r. Negative direction of r. It's going to point from f to b. It's going to point from here to here. So I really don't have to take this cross product and then take the resulting cross product. I could simply write, that's not what I did on my solution, but I'll do it this way. B D squared times the distance, which is just 12 inches, right? But in what direction? Well, in that direction. So negative 3 I. Let's see. Uh, and positive root 135j, but I can't just multiply by something arbitrarily. I'm trying to multiply by a unit vector, right? The magnitude comes from omega cross omega cross this distance. That's all right here. I just need a unit vector that points back up opposite of bf. So I just need to divide this by the magnitude. So what is the magnitude? Just 12 inches. Now it turns out, numerically, those two 12s cancel. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. I'll go ahead and compute the cross product here. So we've got equals, uh, let's see, where are we? Oh, there we go. The acceleration of B, and let's see, K cross I is J, so plus 3 alpha BD in the J direction. And k cross j is minus i, minus times minus is plus. So plus alpha bd root 135. What did I say? k cross j? Yeah, so minus i times negative is positive. And then plus omega bd squared. Oh, well, let's, let's go ahead and expand this. So omega bd times negative 3 would be negative 3 omega bd squared i. And then let's see, plus omega bd squared root 135 j. Okay. <clears throat> now, the acceleration of point b is still known. In fact, the acceleration of point B is still sitting right here, right? That's where that term, or those terms came from. Okay. So if we expand this, the acceleration of point B, we get negative 48i minus 16 root 135j. That's this term. And then notice that we know the angular acceleration of BD. It's negative 8.2624, so we'll write minus 3 times 8.2624. All I did was take that minus sign and move it out. Remember, I assumed alpha BD, I took it in the positive direction by just writing K rather than writing what it really is. But we get the same result here. Okay. So that's 3 alpha BD. We've got that term taken care of, and that's, oh, by the way, in the J direction. Alpha BD is still a negative 8.2624. So negative times the negative is positive, so negative 
route 135 in the I direction. And then omega BD is a known. It's just 4 radians per second. So we need 4 radians per second squared, which is just 16 radians per second squared times 3. 3 sixteens are 48 still, so minus 48i. Check off these terms and compute them. And then here, same thing, we need plus 16, because omega BD is still 4 squared is 16, root 135, and that's in the j direction. So there is the acceleration of point F. Notice it's all, why is this all just numbers? Why is there no unknown here? There is an unknown. It's the acceleration of point F. I know everything about how this body is moving. I know it's angular acceleration, it's angular velocity. So the reason there's no unknowns on the right hand side, these are all just numbers. Then I'm just plugging in what I know about the way that body moves. Okay. Now if you simplify that just a little bit and put all the like terms together, we've got 48i here, negative uh, 135 root 8.2624, and another negative 48 here, put all those together, and you'll find negative 192i. So the i component comes out to negative 192. Put all the j components together, what do we have? Well, let's see, we got a, a 16 root 135 that will cancel with this negative 16 root 135. But we still have two j components to add together. Notice they're both negative. So basically, we simply need to add no, that's an I component. I'm sorry. Uh, here we go. Here's another J component. So we need negative 48 with negative 3 times 8.2624. That's a 2, not a 7. And when you add all that together, you get minus 24.787 J. And what are the units? Inches per second squared. You've been consistent, so that should be the units. So that means this point is accelerating in this direction, and it's accelerating in that direction. It's, it's accelerating downward. Okay? Which seems a little bit strange, because F is supposed to move on a horizontal line. But remember, this is a mechanism where it moves approximately horizontally. Okay? Notice it has a lot more motion in the horizontal direction than it has in the vertical direction. We have. Any questions about this problem? It may have seemed confusing throughout because I varied the way I computed cross products. I varied everything I could think to vary. I wasn't trying to confuse you. I was trying to show you different ways to think about it. Because I know students always struggle with vectors and problems like these. So I was trying to show you every variation on a theme that I could. Important points, relative acceleration and relative velocities are very important. Definitely always get the velocity solution before you get the acceleration solution. Otherwise, you won't get the acceleration solution. Beyond that, in most of my classes, I'm really particular about units. I want you to be careful with units here, but it's a lot to write when you're computing cross products. So as long as you get all the units into a consistent form, you should be okay. You take your cross products and everything. Just remember how things should come out. Uh, in other classes like thermo, where there's a lot more units to deal with, it's a little more of a concern. But here, what do we have? Length and time, you know, radians for angle, and that's it. As long as you don't mess up and go to degrees somewhere, you'll be fine. Okay. Anything else? Any questions?